It has been said that average people want you to stay average. Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast, the podcast designed to challenge you to break the mold that average has on the world. Each episode offers insights directly from those who choose to break average every day. Now, for the latest insights, here are your hosts, Paul Gustafson and Mike Harbour. Hey, welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast. My name is Mike Harbour. This is episode 34. I'm we're here with my friend and co-host Paul Gustafson. Hey, Paul, how are you, my friend? Mike, good to be with you. Uh, I'm enjoying this time of year. It's fantastic. Uh, springtime, almost summer. So this is a, just a fun time of year. Yeah, it really is. We're having some breaking average weather in Arkansas right now, which is which is good. You know, and when I say that, uh, it's on the good side finally because just a week ago, Paul, we had to wear pull our sweatshirts back out. It got cold when it was unseasonably cold a uh, few days. But uh, yesterday, I was out on the golf course following my son around, and you know, I don't know if you can tell it on the on the on the camera here, but I got a little bit of sunburn yesterday, man. It was nice, eighty five degrees and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. I thought it was, it was really spray. awesome. I thought that was a spray tan, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, one of those rub on tans. You know, what was yeah. really awesome too is, you know, we I talk, we talk about breaking average on this podcast. I can't tell you how many airplanes I saw in the sky yesterday, like vapor trails. Right. And for the last year, I mean, literally I've, you know, been outside and not seen any airplanes. And and so we're getting back to where we want to be in the, in the world, right. People flying around. I don't know if I told y'all, uh, you know, about, I think it was in July. Yeah. July of, of 2020, I drove through Atlanta, the busiest airport in the world. And I saw one airplane take off and usually you drive through there and you just see hundreds. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited uh, that we're getting back uh, to where we want to be. And we're continuing to dive into your book, Paul, Breaking Average, Seven Critical Factors for Team Strong Leadership. Uh, I think we're we're going to hit the last chapter today, Paul, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're jumping in. You know, there's actually a, a closeout chapter. So this isn't the closeout chapter, but this is the last factor. We're diving into this factor. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite. It's called the yes factor. And I can't wait to get into our discussion and Helping, helping us in this discussion. And we've got our in-studio guest again, Rick. Rick's joining us. Hey, Rick. What's happening? Hey, uh, Mike, speaking of summer, right? It's 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 baseball time. And I'm not actually going to take this in the direction you think I am. But uh, you, you recognize recognize this jersey? Yeah, Blue Wahoos, my friend, Quint Studer, would be happy that you have that on. I'll have to well, tell him. interestingly enough, Quint gifted me this jersey. So when we did the... Um, when we did the uh, Transformational Leader Awards, which, you know, Quint made it in, into our top five and got invited and came spend time with us, I actually was late uh, to his interview. And normally I change in, in, into something a little bit more professional. And I was wearing a, a Red Sox jersey. And Quint said, hey, do you, is, is that Red Sox jersey that you're wearing for the interview? And I was like, yes, sir. And I told him about how, you know, my name and numbers on the back and that kind of stuff. And he's like, oh, and he told me a little bit about the Pensacola team. Well, when he showed up in Orlando, he gifted me this, this jersey. But it was also turned into kind of my final moment of my weight loss journey commitment because mm -hmm. I went to go put it on because I was so proud. And I could not, I, I couldn't put this jersey on. And look how wow. baggy it is now, but I couldn't wear this jersey. And I was like, that's it. Like, I, I have wow. been monkeying around with this. It's time. And, and awesome. now, now it's almost too big for me, man. So I, well, I thank Quint for that, for, for, for that last piece of inspiration. Yeah, well, that's, um, man, one, I, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because Quint's not giving me a jersey. <laughs> uh, for, from the Blue Wahoos. And, and I've known him for a long time. And, and, but two, man congratulations on breaking average i mean look at that couldn't get in it and now yeah. it's i mean it's it falling was like, off of you yeah the uh, and i remember putting it on um we were at the lunch where everybody was there and i was kind of proud of it and i started to put it on and quinn actually saw it he, he, he was like 
oh, that's uh, these are tight fitting. Like he was trying to like he was like <laughs> I, I I missed the size on the kid, right? And, and he started thinking he's got it's got my name and number on the back, and so you can report to Quint now. I I wear it with pride, and every time I put it on, it's it's that extra oomph of yeah, like I'm 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 feeling good. I'm 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 doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I tell you what I'm gonna do right now, Rick, is I'm gonna take a screenshot. And uh, I'll send him that, man, and let him know, hey, I just you know, was on, on the Breaking Average podcast with Rick, and he wanted me to show you he's fitting in that blue Wahoos jersey. So That's awesome. Uh, I'll That's share awesome. that with him. That's awesome. It is awesome. So, Paul, uh, we took that – you know, we got off track a little bit, right? We broke we, – <laughs> we broke – I don't know. I don't know if you call that Breaking Average or Breaking, breaking Wind or, breaking, or, or breaking, no. breaking what? No. <laughs> If it's me speaking, it's breaking wind. It's cool. <laughs> oh, man, that's too funny. We broke script. Oh, that's think... what it is. Broke yeah, script. That's it. <laughs> uh, that's good. Hey, Paul, uh, let's get into uh, the yes factor. Uh, I love I love this, especially, you know, when the Razorbacks are beating the Tennessee Volunteers. It's a yes. Um, you know, but – we can talk about that. I'm sure Rick will bring something back up. I had to get that in because I thought he was going to do it a minute ago. But, Paul, you talk about the story. Get us into the story of the Yes Factor. You share a great story in here. I love the movie that you're going to talk about, but I'll leave you to share that with our audience. Uh, it's, it's funny. I would love to talk about baseball and other sports, but this is not a sports movie. Um, you've seen it. Most people have seen this movie. Um, we've talked about it before, The Greatest Showman. And it is a fantastic movie. Um, and uh, I just wanted to just kind of highlight it. This really lines up well with our topic today on the yes factor. Now, the movie itself is a great story. P.T. Barnum, you know, it's played by um, Jack, Hugh Jackman. Fantastic actor, right? And the story is good. But the story behind the story, I think, is what's really compelling here. So... Here's this idea. Seven years. It took them seven years to make this movie. And it started off with just a, a set of challenges after challenges after challenges. And really this, this whole yes factor of like, okay, how can we get the right actor into this? Can we get Hugh Jackman? Yes. Can we get the right soundtrack, the right music? Took a while, but yes, we got the right music. Can we get the right actors who, some people who have never sung before to sing and Others who are, who are just phenomenal singers who've never done, who've never acted before. Can we get them together on the same page? Yes. Can we get enough money to make this movie? Ooh, investors, that's tough. Trying to do a musical, that's a tough one. We don't have a lot of investors on that. So we're going to try. We're going to try. And so <clears throat> fast forward, they're right. They've got everything lined up except for the money, except for the investors. And they fly them all in, all these investors, to New York City. And uh, they're going to pitch it one more time. They need some cash. They need some capital to, be, to make this incredible movie. And so Hugh Jackman, though, unfortunately, had oral surgery the day before. Hmm. He, he's a no-go. He's going to show up. He's going to be there for the bits and parts, but he can't sing the song. How can Wolverine sing music, right? That, that's what they're wondering. So uh, they, they bring in another guy to kind of play that part, just to sing the part. But Hugh Jackman's sitting there, and he's all on board. He wants this movie bad. And he realizes that the, these investors, they're, they're not going to say yes. They're going to say no. I've got to sing that last song. So he, uh, he gracefully kind of says, hey, look, dude, I, I'm going to sing this last song. And so right there in front of the investors as they're pitching this thing, as they're going through the sounds, the, the, the different songs, uh, Jackman, who, again, the doctor says he, he shouldn't do this. Jackman feels like he's got to do this. He's 100% in. He sings this song, From Now On was the song. Some of you guys may remember that. Do you remember that tune, From Now On? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what's really cool, I love the story. I'll, I'm going to read just a little bit from uh, Michael Gracie. He was the director for this this movie. He said, everyone, when he was done, all right, he takes this last song, he, he leads it. And they're just blown away. He said, everyone jumped up on the top of their seats. And um, the, the, it, it, he just said there was a euphoric moment. The man that everyone had come to hear sing was finally singing. That's when we got the green light. And the rest is history. That's, what, that's how The Greatest Showman came together. It was a series of yeses. 
And uh, it's it's just a great example of the us factor. There's more stories behind it. And certainly watch the movie if you haven't seen it, because I think the movie itself reflects it. But um, but yeah, that's that's the story I wanted to share was was how The Greatest Showman came together. Paul, I love that movie. You've picked one of my favorite, The Greatest Showman, right? And and I love uh, I love Hugh Jackman in that. Because he goes from, you mentioned it, the Wolverine, you know, this tough guy to playing a completely different role, right? Uh, and it was fantastic. And to, I think the part I, I missed as you tell that story is the charisma began echoing through the investors and that created the yes factor yeah. uh, that, they, that they needed to get that movie going. And I, and I love that. So we're going to talk about this, this core element, uh, the three core elements uh, of the, of the yes factor, Rick, why don't you kind of dive into that a little bit and, and get us moving in the right direction? For sure. Yeah. But back to the greatest showman for just a second though, my, one of my favorite quotes of all time has come from that movie and that's, you don't need the whole world to love you. Just a few good people. And, mm-hmm. and that, that line hit, there's also an awesome YouTube, uh, video out there, uh, that has the Aquila set, uh, settle, when she's singing um, uh, This Is Me and it's kind of coming together with the full chorus and everybody wants a rehearsal and you could just feel it in the room, but you see Hugh Jackman, people are crying. Like it's crazy the emotion that you can see from this this practice session. So phenomenal, phenomenal movies. Great to be a part of it. But but I think the story you told, Paul, is all three factors of the S factor for sure. I mean, it starts mm-hmm. off with the invitation. Right. So the yes factor starts with the invitation. They had to be invited. The investors had to be invited to, to see what this was going to be about. Then they start to align and you see the alignment come together when they're like, ah, you know what? I could see myself behind this. It seems good to feel good story. Maybe they'll make a little bit money. And then when Hugh Jackman jumps up on the chair and, and does the lead, it turns to belief. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So the yes factor is invitation, align and belief. And what we're going to talk about today is that invitation, that inviting people to be called to, uh, to leadership. Mm. Yeah. I love that's That's good. You got me fired up. You know, I, I love listening to soundtracks. I don't know about you guys. Right. I, but I oftentimes when I'm sitting here working at my desk, I'll just go to my Apple music account and I'll just, you know, often at times I'll turn on the star Wars soundtrack cause I'll just like the instrumental piece. It helps me get focused. But when I want to be really motivated, I mean, I bought the entire soundtrack for, for this movie, uh, the greatest Showman, because it, I mean, it's one of the most motivational soundtracks there is out there. What do you guys think about that? I, I love it. And then there was the secondary soundtrack. I don't know if you've listened to, but a lot of uh, pop music remade the songs kind of so oh, really like pink, nice. yeah pink uh uh, uh sings the um never enough song yeah, and yeah. uh yeah there's there's some great like panic at the disco did one and yeah it's great yeah, yeah. So good. I, I i'll listen to it sometimes when i'm traveling and i put my big earphones on on the airplane right and i'm sure people think man what's wrong with that guy he's having a sick because i you know it, it gets yeah. i'm not a very good dancer but i'll get up there dancing in my seat man <laughs> what's that guy listening to I'm sure that's what they think <laughs> hey if you're listening uh, to the breaking average podcast or you're watching on the empowered living show we want to thank you uh, for being a continued follower of what we love to share, just helping leaders, helping teams break average in everything that they do. Uh, We also like to interview great leaders that are out there in the marketplace doing great things. We've got some pretty big names coming up. We're not going to share those right now uh, because we've got to get a full you know, commit, we've got to get the yes from them. And we think we're really close, right? Uh, We've got to get the yes from them, but there's maybe people that you know, out there in the marketplace and we would love to know who they are breaking average podcast.com forward slash leader that's how you can help us go to breaking average podcast.com forward slash leader introduce us uh, invite them into the breaking average community uh, and and then we'll do the rest just leave us the information there again that's breaking average podcast.com forward slash leader so thanks for that yeah, it's great. And Rick, we've got a cool sponsor today, don't we? So, we do. We yeah. do. It, we talk about breaking average all the time. And this is certainly, if we're going to talk yes factor and the invitation to lead, this is somebody who answered answered the bell, answered the call. Uh, and our sponsor today is Chestnut Mountain Ranch, right? Which is a Christ-centered home and school 
um, for for troubled young men who, who just need need a little bit more direction, need some love, and, and need need to see somebody uh, live positively and in integrity with integrity and push them in the right direction, right? So they are located in Morgantown, West Virginia, and they reach the hearts of young men and restore broken families through a structured and loving community. Again, uh, leadership is, you, you, gotta, you gotta show the way, right? You gotta show the way, and this is the way that they do it. So their vision is to restore hope to children and, and families. And you can learn more by visiting cmrwv.org. And we'll put that in the show notes again, but it's cmr wv.org that is chestnut mountain ranch yeah you know and real quick on that i'm I'm so so excited that we get to highlight them because what a great organization i had a chance to actually to connect with steve finn he's a director of chestnut mountain ranch and you guys were part of this so he was nominated as one of our top 10 john maxwell leadership award uh, candidates a few years back and he's doing a phenomenal job. And his story, we'll have to have him on a podcast here because his story really is centered on this yes factor because he had an invitation uh, as a as a um, Atlanta, or Georgia, I guess, I don't know if it, it was a state trooper was Atlanta. in Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got an invitation to, to kind of help out at a child, uh, boyhood, childhood, or excuse me, a, a boy. A boy's home in Atlanta called Eagle Ranch, and uh, really inspired by that, and then really felt called to be able to start his own in West Virginia. And everything that's happened there, everything that's transpired, even though it's been challenge after challenge, has also been a um, just a focus on this yes factor and and seeing how it comes together. It's just amazing, actually. So I can't wait uh, for folks to kind of explore that website and, uh, definitely support that, that organization. They're making a, such a huge impact in Morgantown, West Virginia, no doubt about it. Yeah. Steve's story and, and what he has done and saying yes, right. Saying yes. Cause here he is in a, in a job where, you know, today, I mean, looking back, he'd probably say, man, I'm so glad I said yes. Uh, you know, so long ago, because, you know, so often today, uh, the police force is, um, you know, they're not fully supported maybe as they were when, you know, 20 years ago when he first became a cop, uh, but him saying yes back then to a need in the community, that's a huge need right now, right? That's a huge need right now. I mean, fatherless homes, boys that are out there are kind of on their own, uh, is a huge challenge. And Steve's definitely breaking average, uh, in what he's doing and, and making a difference, not only in the lives of those young men, but the future generations that are going to be, that, that are going to come after those. Right. And you talk about legacy. Um, Steve's definitely building a legacy uh, that, that I know he's not concerned with, but that he's definitely building a legacy in the lives of others. So let's dive in to, to talk a little bit more about this yes factor. What does it mean? What does it mean to say yes? Uh, why does it matter? Um, and, and Rick, let, let's start with you and, and really get diving into this a little bit more. We've all had opportunities to say yes. We had to say yes to each other. Uh, we had a long discussion uh, prior to, to beginning this recording about, you know, saying yes to the future of the Breaking Average podcast and what that may look like as well. But let's talk about why it matters. What does it mean? Yeah, it, and it's it's that the invitation itself, um, you know, one of, the, one of the people that we've highlighted on the show before, Barb Stegman, is the one that introduced this. It wasn't her thing, but she's the one that you some of these great ideas that we hear that have been passed around you remember the person who shared that with you uh, and she shared the idea of cathedral thinking with me and i'd never really heard that term before um and what cathedral thinking is she goes rick all the the most beautiful cathedrals in the world the architects and and the designers designed those knowing they would never see them fully built they would never see them come to full fruition you know because it would take hundreds and hundreds of years right, to build some of these just beautiful uh, monuments. I mean, you think uh, like the, my, one of my favorite buildings in the world in, in, is in Italy, is the Pantheon. I, I mean, just the, the sheer architecture of, of that building is just gorgeous to me. Um, but the designer of that uh, never saw it into full fruition. So it's about thinking beyond um, yourself and also thinking bigger than things that you may actually see achieved. Uh, and so that's that's really interesting for me. It's, so that's an invitation, and it's a big invitation sometimes because you know also by saying yes that you may never see the the end result of that, but you believe it in enough that you want to be a part of it. And my take in all that is is I've had a philosophy for for many years of just why not, 
Right? Why not me? Why, why don't I get involved? Why, why shouldn't I do that? Right? So many people start going, well, there's all these failure things that can occur. There's all these negative thoughts. And I've always been one of going, well, if it happens, then I just know that's not a way that we're going to go forward. Right. We talked about Edison is, is I didn't fail a thousand times. It's, I just know a thousand time, a thousand ways that don't work. Right. Well, I've always approached my career that way. An opportunity comes up and people, I was actually sharing with a, a good friend um, this past weekend. We hadn't talked in probably six or seven years. And he's just asking to catch up. And when I started to roll off just what I've been involved in, in the last five years, the question became, um, how did you do all those different things? And I was like, uh, the, and the real answer was I was invited. <laughs> and I said, yes. Right. And that was it. <laughs> There's like, the opportunity presented itself and people say, Oh, that you're so lucky for doing certain certain things. And no, no, I was prepared. And then the opportunity met that preparation. And the only thing you can't really control, as my friend Chase Hampton says, about luck is timing. But when the opportunity presents itself and, and you have prepared for it, then yeah, you're lucky, right? Because the timing is now there and off you can go. So to me, um, what's important about the invitation is not only inviting others into your vision, but saying yes when because you never know where that's going to go. I got this this call from a guy that I, I knew of, I knew of, he, he, he seemed like a good dude. And I, I'd watched him from afar. And I get this phone call from this guy, Mike Harbour. It says, Hey man, I, I, I want you to join this podcast vision that I have. And, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm in. Like I had no idea what it, that it would turn into what we're been doing over the last couple of years. But again, I had the, uh, I've been prepared for it. There was an opportunity. We said yes. And, and here we are. So to me, invitation is about being prepared. Uh, to, to say yes for that yes factor. You know, have you ever asked somebody, invited somebody in something and regretted it? <laughs> uh, Rick, you were, I, I had to go there, man. I had to go there. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a great, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, sometimes you just get lucky and you ask the right people uh, in and, and certainly, Rick, uh, you're a great addition to what we're doing on the Breaking Average podcast and, and the direction we're going. You reminded me of a quote from Richard Branson. Uh, you, I thought you were going to say this, but if someone offers you an opportunity, uh, an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure how to do it, just say yes and then learn how to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of what you talked about there. And, and I used to be so afraid. Uh, we were talking about personality types earlier um, before we started recording and, and I'm a high D, but I'm also a high C Rick, which means I want to be right, but I'm afraid to be wrong. Right. Yeah. That's kind of my, my personality trait. I want to be right, but I'm afraid to be wrong. And sometimes I would say no, because I was so, I was more afraid to be wrong than to get the experience. And that quote from Richard Branson, the story you just shared reminds me, man, just, just keep saying yes. The times that I've said yes and didn't know, what I realized is, is no one else knew either, right? We're just all kind of figuring it out together. Um, and, and it's a, that's what saying yes, that's what the, you know, the yes factor is all about is, is one, sometimes uh, taking, say, saying yes to the invitation, uh, but it's also sometimes inviting yourself in. Uh, as well, you know, and, and saying, Hey, I want to volunteer here. I know some of my greatest things, like I've got a great relationship right now with another organization that, that I kind of volunteered to help in any way I could. First, I paid for some access. I went to a conference uh, and then I, I started volunteering for like, Hey, I can help here. Let me know if you need help, like not asking for anything. Right. And now it's become an invitation to participate even more. Uh, which which has turned into a great opportunity uh, for me as well. So I love those stories. And, and Paul, I'm still in maybe a little bit of your thunder. Why don't you give us some insight into what into this whole idea of why it's important and why it matters? No, I, I, this is great. I'm I always pull my notebook out when I have a conversation with you guys because you guys are dropping thoughts and ideas, and I'm like, ooh, I got to write that down because if I don't write it down, it gets lost and. Uh, of course, we've got this recorded, so I can go back and listen to it. But I, I, you inspire me, guys, and I appreciate it. And what what I realized as you guys were you you two guys were sharing was that everything great starts with an invitation, right? Our leadership journey, the journey that we're on, there was an invitation that came about. Now we may have been reluctant initially. Maybe there's some invitations that we've had where we've said no, and we look back now, we're like, oh. I had that chance. I had that opportunity. I could have, and I should have. Why didn't I? Um, but there are some opportunities for us. And rather than saying no, why not say yes? 
And if we're not even ready to say yes, don't say no yet. Just say, hey, look, wow, thank you for the invitation. Let me think about it. And go through that process thinking through it. And um, you just it just may lead you exactly where you need to go. So the yes factor is why we do what we do as leaders, right? It's about the, the law of buy-in. Leaders lead because they feel a sense of invitation. They feel called. Steve Finn feels called. Jack, uh, Hugh Jackman felt called to do that movie. I mean, that was totally out of his league. At least some people thought. He did it. It's fantastic, right? This is important. The whole This invitation is so important. It's a signal, right? It's a signal for us as leaders. It, it, it really kind of invites belief, and belief drives behavior. But, all right, so when we think about the invitation, we need to start with belief in ourselves as leaders. We need to have belief in the vision, but we also need to have belief in others. So that's what I think of when we start to really unpack this thing. It's so important, this invitation starts with belief yeah so good um you know one of the i like to kind of come at our conversations around from a leadership perspective and and also you know when we think about breaking average we're talking about the team right how the seven critical factors for team strong leadership one of the important things as a leader to remember is that most people and when i say most i mean most like nine out of ten people lack self-belief right they they lack um they have fear they're, they're more fearful of saying yes um than than they're than they are likely to say uh you know say no so what what, what we have to do as leaders is we have to find a way to gain buy-in to create momentum and this so let's shift to to the kind of the next part of our conversation rick is how do we cultivate this idea of saying yes knowing that maybe nine out of ten people are going to say no not because they don't want to, but because they have some fear in their life. How do we cultivate this idea of saying yes in our team so we can create momentum to move forward? Yeah, I, again, I think it starts with that invitation piece. Um, yeah, I wrote a speech several years ago. Uh, it, it, this just hit me, Paul, through your conversation. That's why I love about our podcast is somebody will say something and it triggers, you know, a thought or a story that we didn't even intend to, to bring up. But um, I was invited to... Um, this this civic organization to, to speak and it, it was a large event uh, i was it, and um, i wrote a speech called the somebodies and what i realized was that you know there's conviction and complaint right when when when, when i want to if i'm talking to you and i'm upset about something and i'm complaining about something there's conviction there i believe so i believe in it to the point that i'm complaining about it Right. And so, and it's always, you know, somebody ought to fix this or somebody ought to do something about this or somebody ought to do, well, hello, somebody. Cause if you have mm -hmm. conviction and complaint, then you can have the same conviction in the solve. And that becomes the invitation itself, right? The invitation becomes like, if you see this enough and you're convicted enough to tell me about it, to complain to me about it, then, then let's take that same conviction into the solve. And their first answer is, well, I don't know how. And evidently, neither does somebody else. That's why the problem is existing. And most of us didn't even know. I didn't even know that was a problem that existed until you told me. <laughs> right? so, so now it's in my awareness. That's great. But I'm inviting you now. And I'm inviting this audience. If you want to start, if you, if, how do we transfer to the yes factor is if you have enough conviction to complain, then you have enough conviction to solve. And so my invitation to the audience is whatever it is that you're complaining about. And if you've ever said, man, somebody ought to do something about that. Well, hello, somebody. And I'd like to invite you to take the first step in solving whatever that issue may be. And some of these things are bigger than us and, and they should be bigger than us. Right. But when, when we got invited, um, I answered a, a invitation to, to go alongside with John to transform a country. And I loved when he explained that. And they're like, will you ever see a transformed country in your lifetime, John? He goes, no, but I'd rather fail at something bigger than me than succeed at something small. And that was like a calling right then. I was like, well, I'm in. Let's go. How are we going to do it? I don't know, but let's figure this out. I would rather fail at something bigger than me, have an idea way bigger than me mm. and have it never come true then be successful at all these little small things that I can convince myself I can do. So hello, somebody. That's my, that's my invitation. I love that story, 
Rick, you gave me a brilliant idea. We should try to pull it off sometimes. Once in a while, I have these brilliant ideas. Paul, you're taking notes. I'm not. Maybe you should write this down. You remember the old uh, co- comedy skit, Abbott and Costello? Who's on Nobody, first? Go, so who's on first? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. talk, you, we could do something called somebody's in the dugout. No, somebody's on the pictures, man. No, that's somebody's yeah. you, right? We could we could create a script like that and play that out <laughs> a little bit. But uh, I, I love that. Yeah, somebody look look in the mirror. It's you, it's you, mm-hmm. and and you're the one that can begin that cultivation of buy-in, of cultivation of yes uh, for others to give them some some momentum to move forward. Paul, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm still writing notes down, but I just put every day starts with yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Think about it. Right. Every day starts with yes. We have opportunities that are, you know, maybe we don't even know what they are, but we know that the day is filled with opportunities and we're going to get an invitation. Now, the invitation is not going to come in the mail. Maybe it will, but very rarely does it come in the mail. and says you've been invited to but send us the RSVP. We're going to get invitations in lots of different ways. Be ready for it. Be prepared for that. And here's what you know we're talking about transferring it how do we create others how do we get others to say yes how do we get others to to help multiply the invitations right and i think this is so important as we're building teams we're talking about team strong leadership and um you know the journey is never done solo you know maxwell talks about if you're if you're if you're leading and and there's nobody following with you you're just taking a hike but here we're going to lead with other people. So we need to invite other people to come with us. And I love this idea of charisma. I totally got it backwards, guys. I thought charisma was this like, you know, uh, Richard Simmons kind of charisma, kind of whatever, you know, a, super, a personality. I, I totally got charisma wrong until I started studying this thing. Until I started looking at what like Hugh Jackman did, right? Like Steve Finn, like we talked about earlier. Um, Quint Studer, all these kind of amazing leaders that are out there and what they're doing, they've got charisma. It isn't their personality. It's that they care. Charisma is like fuel to a fire for a leader's vision. We need to have that charisma. We need to be passionate about what it is that we believe in, and we need to believe in the other people around us. So it's not about personality. It's about showing up. That's what it is. It's about showing up. So if you as a leader show up, that's the first step to be able to extend that invitation and transfer that invitation to other people. Very, very, this is really important. That helps create buy-in. It creates commitment. Charisma can increase the speed of yes. That's what I love about this. It increases the speed of yes. It creates that ripple effect. Like, wow, okay, others are getting along with and doing it. And they may have some other ideas too. And that's what's really cool is you get to see those ideas extended. This podcast is a great example. We share some ideas and we kind of build on each other's ideas. It's like a Lego block kit. We, we don't know what kind of Lego we're going to build by the end of this thing, but it's going to be awesome because we've invited each other to be a part of this conversation and this dialogue, and we have a lot of fun. So I would say it's about showing up first as a leader, uh, sharing those values. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's about caring. That's really the focus. I think that that's probably the number one strategy and tactic that I would share is just you know, it's not about personality, it's about caring. That's the most important trait of a personality that I think everybody can reflect independent upon whether they're an introvert, extrovert, or whatever. So, yeah. That's Your thoughts on this, Mike? I'd love to hear Yeah, you. that's good. Well, you know, my my thoughts were, you know, when you were talking about charisma, Richard Simmons is not the first guy I think of. But <laughs> I know, I, yes. I, I, I was thinking more like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse or, you know, something like that. I mean, you kind of threw me there when you said Richard Simmons. Right. But, he did, you know, he did have a charisma about him, right, an energy right. about him. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. I had to had to throw no. that in there. <laughs> well, I could – like, you couldn't you think, think of anybody it else. The first I know. name I think, that came to my mind either. Who, who's the other name, Rick? A few weeks ago, that he brought out. That, that, oh, oh, he's yeah. gonna bring up the Tina Yother. Tina oh, Yother. Tina quote. Yothers. Yeah, I mean, Paul. <laughs> Paul just. I mean, you talk about breaking average, man. He is coming way out of left field with some of these some of these people. I, he's, he's sharpening my skills, man. <laughs> well, 
uh, there could have been other char- charismatic folks that I was going to uh, identify. I just couldn't think of anybody. Yeah, else but I'm, I'm sorry. If we had a top 25 top charismatic people, I don't think Richard Simmons no. would be on that list anywhere. <laughs> no, it, it, <laughs> uh, that was funny. Probably not. Funny. <laughs> Let me get us back on track, Paul. I love, I love what you said about every day starts with yes. Um, yeah. And you reminded me, you know, this morning I got up and I started my day with, yes, I started my day with some journaling and some scripture reading. And, and, you know, one of the kind of the scripture I was reading this morning was about the gifts that we've been given. We've been gifted with all spiritual gifts. We've been gifted with all types of language. All we've got to do is say yes to those to use them, right? To fulfill our calling, whatever that calling is for us that we all, you know, all of us have a different calling, a different role in the world, but I've got to be willing to say yes to that uh, so that I can make an impact in the world uh, and do something significant as Rick was talking about, right? D, I mean, I'd rather fail at, at trying something significant than, um, you know, than saying no and be, being too afraid to do that. But one of the things to transfer this, to kind of cultivate this with our teams is, um, you know, what we've got to be a better question asker at times, mm-hmm. you know, like what are the right, what are the questions you're asking your team? Like what's holding them back? What are they afraid of? What, what would they say yes to? Why do they say no? I mean, I think these are some great questions that we need to begin to ask our team so that we can seek to understand what's holding them back and help them through that fear uh, and, and get them past the no, right? And then this takes time. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'm impatient and I don't want to slow down, but it takes time. You know, I need to be willing to ask the right questions, slow down and allow time for buy-in to be able to get, uh, get people to, to move forward. So invite, align, and then believe, as Rick talked about when you shared the story of, of um, you know, from the movie. In, in that we've been talking about today uh what's the name of the movie we've been talking about? <laughs> greatest, showman. greatest showman oh my gosh i got i gotta have alignment there but fantastic conversation rick why don't you talk about our sponsor real quick again and and then we'll move on kind of the, the landing the plane here absolutely so again it's chestnut mountain ranch you can visit them at cmrwv.org Uh, It is a Christ-centered home and school in Morgantown, West Virginia, and we'd love for you to take a look at them and see what their mission's all about. Yeah, thanks, Rick, for that. Paul, it's time for our tip and challenge. Uh, It's one of my favorite favorite portions. Uh, It's probably, you know, if if people are smart, they would just come and and fast forward to the tip and challenge, right? Just get that. Don't get all the other stuff that we talk about sometimes. But um, Rick, why don't you you give us uh, kind of closing thoughts, tip and challenge for you, then we'll go to Paul this time. A closing thoughts uh, completely offline, but uh, we're talking about charisma and we're talking about greatest showman. And uh, I was fascinated that Hugh Jackman went on tour in, in 2019. He had a, like a 10 city tour uh, that was, it was called the man, the music, the, the show, something of that sort. And uh, my, my family and I were all in, we went to Atlanta and saw it and he held, I was like, how is he going to hold the stage for two hours, man? It's just like, Hugh doesn't have that much material. Like, I mean, was he going to Wolverine us? Right. Everybody keeps coming back to that. Right. (laughs) He was very, very charismatic, captivating. He was one of my favorite shows I've seen in in a long time. The whole audience was kind of singing along. It was completely unscripted. He, he, he took audience questions and just let the audience kind of flow the show. Um, and it, it endeared me to him even, even better. So if you get an opportunity and he's coming to your town, I'd go check out that show. Oh, that's yeah, cool. that's fair. That's great. I'd love to, I wonder if that was recorded anywhere. Rick, do you know? I, I believe he did a, a, a DVD that, that, yeah, I, I know that they were recording everything, but there, there were some great unscripted moments there. There was a, a, a mom that had a, a, a grandma. She was probably 70s or 80s, had a sign that said, all I want is a, a kiss from Hugh Jackman. And he, he brought her up there. And it was one of the funny – I actually have that. I recorded that on my phone. It's one of the funniest interactions I've seen. Uh, but it was, it was cute. It was cute. That's awesome. I need to see if I can find that somewhere. Paul, tip and challenge from you, my friend. Yeah, I love that. That's good. Um, <clears throat> invite others. I would start with that. That's the tip, right? The tip is invite others. What? How can you invite others t- today, right? You've got um, you got a passion, a vision, a journey, and you can invite others to join you on that journey. I love how Trudy Menke shares this in the book. She shares. She co-authored this chapter, and uh, she was a guest last week. And it was so great to have Trudy on. We're going to get Trudy again on a future call. 
But um, she shared that when you go from informing people to inviting people, the vision becomes more relational, especially when the invitation is delivered in person. Hmm. Especially when in the invitation is delivered in person. And I, I, that really struck me, right? So like, okay, informing people, that's one thing. And you see it on Facebook all the time, social media. But if you go to inviting people, okay, that's good. And then she shares that the vision becomes more relational. That's, that's great. But, but when we go and we actually have a conversation with that person, deliver it in person, deliver it one-on-one, that, that's the way to do it. What a great opportunity for us. There are opportunities for connections and that's our challenge. The challenge is look for connections today and create some of those invitations, all right? Uh, be sure to make your invitation relational and intentional. Make your, your invitation relational and intentional. That's, that's my tip and challenge. How about you, Mike? Yeah, so good. You, you completely uh, changed mine a little bit, Paul, here at the end, because, you know, Rick brought up a great point earlier uh, about just say yes to the invitation. Paul, you said you know, invite others. And the reason the three of us are here together is because we all three said yes to an invitation, right? John Maxwell sent me a video. It's been 10 years ago now, Paul, um, 2011. And I said yes to that. And I met you, Paul, on John Maxwell's back porch in West Palm Beach, Florida in 2011. And then you know, Rick, sometime along the way, he's a little bit, he's a little bit of a slagger, you know, he, he, he but he said yes, sometime along the way, Paul, uh, J- Rick, yeah. when did you say yes to the Max? Uh, 2013. 20. So a couple of years later, yep. uh, we, we all come together. Uh, and then a few years later, you know, a couple of years later, I don't know, somewhere, Paul, Paul invited me into, you know, being in a, a part of the John Maxwell leadership award. And, and then we invited Rick into that. And, and we said yes to this podcast, but it's, you look at, you look at back at those things, right? We all said yes, a little bit along the way, not really knowing each other, not really knowing exactly where we would end up. And now we're talking about even bigger vision than we have, but, but it was that first, it was the invitation first, but it was also the willingness to say yes, that begins to propel us forward. So the tip goes back to what Rick said earlier, say yes, even if you don't know how. Um, and, and then when you say yes, look for others that you can invite in to the process that have a like mind, like energy to go along with you, because we're definitely all three of us are better together than we would be by ourselves. Right. I think we would all agree to that, uh, on this show. So, so that's my tip and challenge, Paul, say yes, uh, and invite others that have a, have a like mind so that you can gain momentum and move much, much faster. Because I learn as much from you guys, probably more so than I'm giving to you. And I think that's important. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that, Mike. I think, you know, and you share some stories with me in terms of the invitations that you receive, like with Quint and, uh, and others. And, uh, um, it's so, it's such, it's just a great reminder, you know, Mike, and, and really for everybody, Guys, create some invitations for somebody. You don't know what kind of value you're going to actually add and create for somebody else when you invite them along. Invite them on the journey. They may be just the person that you need to be able to carry out and cast that vision. They may be just the right person. Don't allow yourself to think that somebody can't make an impact in your life. Look for those those opportunities to create those invitations because they're out there. They're out there. So this has been great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Rick. Um, I just want to again thank our sponsor, and we're happy to support Chestnut Mountain Ranch and just love the invitation that they give for all of us, and especially for young boys, um, really trying to give them a better life, and it's fantastic. Visit uh, uh, visit their website that uh, Rick had shared earlier, and also visit our website at breakingaverage.com. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rick. You both brought your A game today, uh, which is good. Uh, we I think we served – uh, the audience well today. There's a lot of great nuggets in this conversation uh, that we hope you, the listener and the watcher on the Empowered Living Show, the listener on the Breaking Average Podcast, we hope you great, found great value in what we offered you today. And, and uh, we hope you'll continue to tune in to the Breaking Average Podcast. Make sure you visit us on breakingaveragepodcast.com. Paul is writing some great stuff, some great blog posts, some information on on the podcast right now. So make sure you also go there. There's other resources for you as well. We'll see you on the next episode of the Breaking Average Podcast. 
Thank you for listening to the Breaking Average Podcast. If you loved what you heard, please take a moment to subscribe. All opinions and comments expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not reflect the opinions or views of any of the advertisers, producers, or platforms. This show was produced by R Squared Multimedia. A special thank you to Milestone Melodies for our theme music. As you continue your day, what is one action that you can apply from this podcast to your life? Tune in for our next episode as we continue to challenge everyone to break average.